Hey friends, it's time for another drugstore video. I'm kind of on a roll with these this week, so let's just go with it. My uh, 90s sweater and I, thank you for being here. So I mentioned in Tuesday's video, um, which was kind of a drugstore haul, that I picked up a couple of CoverGirl things that I wanted to retry because I've got a big CoverGirl sort of brand review type video coming. And I think I'm gonna do it in the form of a full face look for you today because I definitely have the stuff to pull that off. But what's kind of launched CoverGirl back into the spotlight here recently recently is the fact that they are now Leaping Bunny certified. Um, they're a cruelty-free brand, and I think they're the largest brand to get that certification. So that's making a big statement, I think, in the drugstore beauty community. And CoverGirl is a really interesting brand right now. They've kind of given a whole makeover to the look of their products, just packaging-wise. They've all taken on a little bit cleaner, more streamlined appearance, I would say, but yet they're still a brand that will hang on to and continue to sell older products that have been around around since at least the start of my makeup using days, if not probably before then. And I think that's fascinating. So this video is really going to incorporate some of those OG faves, as we might call them, but also some of the new things, because at the same time, so much new has come into their line. They've got a remake on lipsticks, new eye palettes, some newer foundations. So it's just kind of fun to see these two worlds come together. And yet the brand will still hang on to some things that have really been around a long time and I guess cater to um, the consumers who love those items. So we are going to start with one of those older things today um, and it's the CoverGirl CG Smoothers BB Cream. Now this is their tinted moisturizer. It's got SPF 21. I have it here in the shade light to medium. This is going to come in like three really broad shades and this was around many years ago as I said in my last video. Like when I started doing makeup I remember having this and then it was just called like a tinted moisturizer. Now they've named it BB Cream and put it under their CG Smoothers branding. And I'm here to tell you it's not the most uh, full coverage BB cream you're gonna try. It's actually really light coverage. It's truly just a tint of color and I'm actually gonna be going on top of this with a foundation. I just want to show you this and show you how light it is and you'll see the fact that yeah that's pretty light coverage but it'll act as my SPF and my moisturizer today. I think they make a clean BB cream still they call it um, for more oily skin and as I recall that has a little more coverage um, overall in the drugstore like Rimmel BB cream is another one that has a little more coverage but this feels very moisturizer ish with just that slight slight tint that it's giving the skin. This brush that I'm using by the way it's like a double-ended eco tools brush I have a little set here it's a holiday thing gonna talk about those soon so yeah I feel actually really nicely moisturized it's just hardly any coverage and that is the way I remember this product to be it was really good for like starting out with makeup and you just kind of want the feel of okay I'm getting my initial step on there and you don't want anything to look too heavy like that's definitely light the sheerest of the sheer coverage <laughs> and then I've got a couple of newer things to talk about foundation wise. I know I've talked about these both on my channel. You've got the Vitalist Healthy Elixir Foundation and also the True Blend Matte Made Foundation and I really kind of enjoy both of these actually. I more recently started busting this out just to give it a few retries you know because it had been a while for me but I think this Matte Made has fantastic staying power. I've worn it under some really difficult conditions more toward the end of summer, long concerts, being outside and like I was so impressed with that staying power. Or, um, really even coverage, nearly full coverage, I would say, out of that. Right now, as my skin's starting to feel a little more dry, I'm going to go toward the Vitalist Healthy Elixir, and this I have in Creamy Natural. It's a hair dark for me right now, so let's just go with that. Both foundations have a pump, which I think is great, but I was just trying this foundation again yesterday, and I was actually super impressed with the way it wore on me, and it was wearing even better than when I initially tried it out, and I think it might be the fact that if your skin could use just a little extra moisture, this might be a really good option for you. It looks really fresh on the skin. I would say it's a medium coverage. Hey, you know what? Let's use my Sigma Kabuki Air. This is the F80 that doesn't have quite as densely packed bristles, but it's kind of cool. I've been using it on and off, but this foundation is giving some coverage here. It's evening out the skin tone. It's the kind of thing that I think looks really fresh on the skin without packing in any shimmer or filler in that way. And it also claims to have SPF 20 and vitamins and antioxidants, and it is oil-free. But yet, yeah, you can chime in in the comments section too. This feels way more like 
nourishing to the skin, in my opinion, than the uh, matte one. But both, I think, are good foundations, just depending on your need, you know? Don't you love getting a little foundation there in your dark hair? Ah, should have had my makeup headband on. Okay, let's take a visit back to OG land right now, um, to one of my favorite concealers in the line. It's the CG Smoothers Concealer Stick, and I wear this in light. Now, it definitely does look different now. They've done away with the turquoisey packaging. Um, I didn't buy this one all that long ago, but the new one is more with the kind of black and white type theme, I believe. But this concealer reminds me of that CoverGirl Plus Olay Concealer Balm. Anybody remember that from years ago? It was so freaking good. And this seems to be like, I don't know, the way they've held on to that formula. I guess they wanted to have that in a different product and it's a smooth, creamy stick concealer. So I'm just gonna apply this everywhere where I need it. And yeah, as most things tend to be in the CG Smoothers line, it's not too drying. Oh man, by the way, I have a CG Smoothers powder that I keep in my purse all the time, never talk about it. Um, but like I use it as a little touch up powder just to have a mirror, you know, and a powder puff. And it's from the CG Smoothers line. And I really like that stuff. It's worked well for me just in a pinch when you just need a little maybe either light coverage, touch up, don't want it to look too thick and powdery. It's a nice on the go powder. It's a pressed powder that does truly what you think it's gonna do. You know how some, kind of like L'Oreal True Match and different ones from Milani, like they turn out to pretty much be a powder foundation and they may market themselves as such, but some don't, and you turn out to just have way more than you bargain for when you go to put them on. And sometimes that's a great thing, but sometimes you just want the light bit of powder, and that's what the CG Smoothers powder is. So I'm just blending this in with my little Eco Tools brush here. I feel like I'm not getting as great of coverage as I would if I may have gone in with a peachy corrector on that under eye circle. But for just all purpose, all over the face, quick concealing, I think we're doing pretty well here actually. This is covering a lot of different little blemishes and not making them look dry and cakey on my skin, which is great. But this product has been around for a while and I really enjoy it. I'm not sure I can think of a better drugstore price range stick concealer than this. I'm having so much fun with this video, guys. And I think it's because I feel very like I am educated on CoverGirl. Like, CoverGirl was something I was using from back in the early, early days. I'm talking late 90s, everyone, when I would have started using makeup. So, the shirt is appropriate. My Dawson's Creek uh, shirt here. For powders, I'm not sure what I want to do here. I've got an OG and a new. Their newest powder is this Vitalist Healthy Powder. Just like the foundation, it says vitamins uh, E, B3, and B5. I have that in Buff Beige. And then I also have this loose powder, um, the Professional Loose Powder in Translucent Fair. I think I'm gonna go ahead and use this today. This comes with a puff in it. It's got like big sifter holes. Oh my God. But these professional loose powders from CoverGirl, if you do a real like concentrated swatch of them on your skin, or maybe you can tell even closely on your face, there's a very fine, fine shimmer in these powders. So I don't know why they would do that because they don't even remotely market themselves as something glowy, but that's nothing new. They've been sneaking that in this powder for years. <laughs> so I've got some here on my e.l.f. complexion brush and I'm just gonna basically set the whole face with this stuff. I just think it's a light enough powder to do the job anywhere, but it's not my favorite drugstore loose powder at all. Maybelline Fit Me is a great option for my skin tone, the one in Fair, I love using that. CoverGirl also makes the True Blend Minerals. If I'm not mistaken, doesn't that have some little bit of shimmer in it too? Who's really familiar with this stuff? Now that Vitalist um, Press Powder, I have used that a few times and it's fine. I mean, I don't really notice anything amazing about it one way or the other, like in the sense that when you set a foundation with a powder, it tends to last longer, like it does its job. It feels decently smooth and probably a smoother texture than most of their other pressed powders. Hey, is anybody out there using the CoverGirl Clean Press Powder, by the way? That's got to be the most OG of all the stuff, the clean foundation and pressed powder. I remember like being in junior high and I'm pretty sure every girl had a CoverGirl pressed powder walk around smelling like Noxzema, popping the thing open and whoosh, you could smell it. I feel like CoverGirl has never been a line that's been huge with bronzer options. They make one that's the size of their Cheekers blushes, but beyond that, like you might get it in a kit like this. And this is my Peach Punch highlighter palette, which I do like. The bronzer might be the weakest part of this palette, but this overall I enjoy. 
and I'm gonna take a little bit of that, use it where the sun might shine. And this palette really does smell peachy. It was kind of my favorite part, actually, of the newer stuff that they released, like the chocolate palette. Peach palette wasn't too bad. I kind of like this face palette the best. But my skin right now, like, feels very even. It feels hydrated. I feel like I'm kind of in a good place with the skin. But for my blush today, my loves, I have to go OG. I've got to go for the CoverGirl Instant Cheekbones. Also enjoy the CoverGirl Cheekers line as well. But that's what I'm going to use for my blush and my highlight. This is the current packaging of that. And um, this shade is the Sophisticated Sable, I believe. Yes, that would be correct. And it doesn't look especially impressive here in the pan, but... You just wait. This stuff looks good. And one of y'all is an absolute connoisseur of um, instant cheekbones because you left a great informative comment on one of my last videos where I was talking about this. And they said to use the deeper shade kind of right in here, actually, on the apple. Like a little more color, I guess. I like that, and I'm going to blend a little bit of the center shade kind of on top, too. This is a beautiful blush. Like undeniable. Even just the blushy shades have sort of a satin finish to them, which I think makes them look really natural across the skin. And then the highlight is really great too. A little bit just to top off that center shade. Like I'm getting glow from the from the middle shade quite a bit. But that's that radiant. I'm dropping everything today. And I just picked it up with my toes. Thank you very much. But it's the, wow, you've kind of got that look of health and radiance, but you don't really look like you're wearing blush. It's sort of cool. And then you're going to go over here to the end and every CoverGirl Instant Cheekbones that you might buy is going to have a light shade on the far end. And it's going to actually work for you. Oh, they should go in and just like re-promote the heck out of this stuff. This is such a good product. But you know what, CoverGirl peeps, anybody who's watching, just the fact that you're keeping this stuff around, that, that says enough to me. Thank you for catering to the people who have found something they love in the drugstore world and not just doing away with it in a year's time. I think it's important. Let your brand have some loved products. And as you can see with CoverGirl, they're bringing in new all the time, you know, so they're keeping a balance. And I'm just taking a little bit of that highlight like down the nose, maybe a little bit across the forehead, a little on the cupid's bow. Boom, boom. That blush made me look absolutely radiant. Love it. They also have a setting mist. This would come under the heading of new stuff from CoverGirl. And it says all day setting mist look lock up. And I'm just going to spritz a little bit of this on. It has a nice sprayer. Kind of a fresh scent, a little bit of sweetness in there, but mm. this mist has worked really well for me. Um, I do see it kind of take away the powderiness. Um, it's not one of those that looks ultra dewy. I've also gone back and tried my um, Milani dewy finish, and that stuff feels like a freaking spray oil or something. Like, you really glow after that. So in comparison, this is something that really doesn't make you look super shiny. So I think that's a good addition. I think they needed something like that in their line. Now, my brows today are going to be a combo of new and old. One of the new things is this um, little skinny brow pencil in soft brown and I love this stuff. Here's the thing, I think it's great. I like the way a skinny brow pencil will work for me. It's not really unique. It's like L'Oreal's making one of these and NYX is making these. The texture between all three of them seems pretty darn similar. The um, size of the tip is identical. So it's just kind of like pick your brand you want to go with. I must say the soft brown color is definitely ideal for me. I'm kind of remembering how much I do like the really fine tipped brow fill-ins because I have been using the e.l.f. for a while. But CoverGirl also has a brow pomade type product as well, which I don't have as much experience with. But it's just funny how these brands will have such similar formats. You know, the skinny pencil, the spoolie on the other end. It's like you just gotta make it, I guess. But I'm pleased with it. It's a really good texture. It's not too creamy. It's not too hard. And this soft brown is just really appropriate for my kind of cool brown tone that I'm trying to work with. And by the way, I'm in the last season of Friday Night Lights. Stuff's getting really dramatic, really intense. Some bad things are happening to people. And I don't, I don't know how everybody's going to work their way out of this. That show, though, is so good. And it, I had such a, had such a fun chat about that with uh, Pup over Thanksgiving because, you know, she knows all about that show. She's watched that show. We're just in love with it. Part of this brow look that's old school is that I have a professional natural lash clear mascara to set my brows with. So that's nice, 
right? This was probably the first like clear mascara brow thing I would have ever used. It works fine. Sometimes you get, especially when it's new, you'll get a little too much in your brows. It definitely doesn't have the hold of NYX Control Freak Brow Gel. And it's not even holding quite as well as that um, L'Oreal Boost and Set. Really enjoyed that. But you know, they have it, they make it, they've been making it for years. Isn't this so fun? We're going back between like new and old and new and old. And it's just the nature of CoverGirl. It's the way this brand is. And here's another new thing, lid lockup. So we had the look lockup um, setting spray, and this is their eyelid primer. And I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed with this stuff. This has worked really well for me. And if you want a primer that's gonna leave just enough tackiness, like it really does feel a little bit tacky. It doesn't go to 100% smooth and dry once you blend it out, but I do feel like it helps the staying power of the look and the bit of tackiness really helps the shadow intensity. Only thing is when you're in a tube like this, it's the same issue that like when uh, Urban Decay Primer Potion was packaged with the wand applicator and the non-squeezy tube, it was always hard to get to the last of the product. And I foresee that being a problem here. <laughs> We're gonna have to have a crack open the primer ceremony and dig it all out, right? I'm crazy. For eyeshadow, here's what I'm doing. I'm actually going to the CoverGirl website right now because I want to see what eyeshadows are, that they are still making because I know they've got their newer palettes and that's the stuff I've talked about more recently, but okay, they've still got like the four kit eye enhancers on here. Oh, they're still showing like everything. And then we all know about Shimmering Sands, which I've been an advocate for Shimmering Sands for beginners of makeup for years, so I don't think I really need to go there today. I'll have to do a search and find any video where I've used Shimmering Sands and put it below so you can have that. Urban Basics, anyone? Gold Mine. I remember I've already reviewed the True Naked Jewels palette. Nope, I found it. I found what I wanna do. I busted out some CoverGirl Queen collection, y'all. This is Brass and Sass. I remember when my friend David said, you wanna find the CoverGirl Queen collection, like eyeshadows and lip products. And I got this one, I have one other too. But this is really pretty. And we're gonna go there and create a gorgeous look with this today. Yes, I'm holding my sponge tip in because you never know when you might need that. Gonna go into this warm, um, kind of peachy brown to set up the crease. Yeah, the Queen collection, you wanna you wanna seek this stuff out for sure. I wish they had it more readily available everywhere, you know? As you can see, that color is definitely like enough. It built up nicely. I'm gonna use a little bit of the lighter shade here, which isn't a purely like ultra light highlight, but it kind of helps you fade away from your deeper shade in the crease. And then we're gonna go blue and we're just gonna sponge tip it and get this beautiful blue that is not so dark that it's looking navy and dull and black, but it's looking like a nice actual blue. And it is layering up on top of that eye primer like a boss, and we are gonna pat this all over the lid. Yesterday, by the way, I did a look with the Smoky palette because I hadn't used that one yet, and that's one of their bigger palettes. And don't get me wrong, I like most of those palettes. The True Naked ones, like there's the Roses and just the kind of taupey looking one, I think they've actually got a pretty good formula going on for the most part in those. And oh, the True Naked Sunsets, that's a good one. I kind of forgot about that for a minute, but that's probably the best one currently. It's got kind of a modern renaissance feel, if you're thinking modern renaissance on a budget. It was right behind me, right here, this palette, love. But again, they've held on to some of their eye enhancers, and then, you know, here's the Queen collection, which takes on the same format of their eye enhancers. This is a satin finish blue, by the way, and I'm getting all this nice color laid down, but I may still come in with a brush just to sort of even out. Yeah, we'll just take some flat brush action here. That is what kind of helps me wedge it all the way up to the crease. The sponge tip doesn't do that quite so well. But that's a gorgeous blue, you know? I know I got some work to do there on the inner crease, so bear with me. I'm gonna go back into this shade that we started with in the crease, and I'm gonna sort of come right in here, and I'm just trying to make it a little less of a total jump off, you know? And we'll carry it back this way too. And don't you worry about that plum in there. I got plans for that. I just wanted to see what that's like, almost layered up a little bit. 
Oh, that's pretty. Layer a little plum on the outside. Just kind of takes your blue in a little different direction. And now we'll take the plum with just my small crease brush here and let that create a little bit of an outer corner. Like it blends kind of nicely with that peachy brown. Got a nice little blueberries and grapes look. My kids are big fruit eaters and those are the current two favorites, blueberries and grapes. We'll do a little blending just on the outside of that. And I think I want to do mainly purple down here on the lower lash line. It's a real plummy purple, not a very like wild and loud purple, just FYI. I'm just kind of working it like, like smudgy liner there. And then maybe we take a little blue with a pencil brush and let that join the fun as well. One thing I might do, since I've got this handy and there are some nice light shades in here, I might take a little shimmer around my inner corner. I think that's the only thing I'm really lacking here. So take one of these and let that kind of come around to hit the lower lash line and also sort of just touch the color on the upper lash, uh, upper eyelid. Sometimes when you do a step like this, your dark shades just seem darker in contrast. Maybe we even dab a little bit of that right up here for some shine. Brow bone shininess. Nice. Next up, I'm gonna use this um, just kind of traditional liquid liner. It's a super fine, probably one of the finest felt tips I've ever used. So if that idea appeals to you, you might check this out. But they also have one of those little like pizza cutter eyeliners and I tried that and I just kind of like meh, gimmicky, not interested. That's coming from a person who's very accustomed to using a traditional liquid liner, so. Like this stuff goes on so easily, really black. It's had very good staying power on me. That line is so fine for being a felt tip. Like I would have normally said, brush tip, no matter what, is gonna give the finest lines. This one says, au contraire. Have I ever said au contraire in a video? A couple things I'll mention here mascara wise. Um, number one, you know I love CoverGirl Super Sizer. So that is a, in my eyes, an amazing lengthening, just making all the lashes stand out, really good mascara. Also, I've recently played around with this Lash Blast Amplify primer and it was pretty good. Like a lot of times I end up not liking certain lash primers that come out, but I enjoyed this one. But what I want to play around with today is using my CoverGirl The Super Sizer Big Curl. I've used this a time or two. I've used it mostly on top of that primer. So now I want to test it without the primer. But as you can see, it's a curled wand and really the brush is nothing like regular Super Sizer. Super Sizer has a very distinctive brush, like certain rows of bristles and then kind of bare place where you're supposed to kind of lay the product on and then turn it and sweep through. This just seems like a standard curved rubber bristle brush. So let's really take a look at what it can do. Even though this is a pretty new tube, the formula seems very dry. And I'm not always against a real dry formula because that tends to um, assist my lashes in keeping their curl. So maybe that's part of the big curl strategy. I did use this on my lower lashes the other day and it didn't smudge, so that was kind of nice. I love my Lash Blast um, Clump Crusher, you all know that, on the lower lashes because it just, it lays down the perfect amount of product. This, the brush is a bit bunglesome and big so it's hard to limit yourself. I'm like, I got a big clump right there. Don't worry, we'll get through this. The overall like finished effect here on this side, I'm not, I'm not mad at. Like, I actually kind of like that. It's just, I think it's odd that they even put the Super Sizer name on this because the formula is different, the brush is so different. The only thing the same is the turquoise colored tube, you know? I guess it needed a family to be part of. It's not dropping my curl immediately. I think this actually works better without the primer just because it's such a dry formula. It sort of felt like it was fighting against the primer at times as I would put it on, but on its own, it, it can be totally cool. Who's using good old Lash Blast in the orange tube these days? Anyone? Anyone? They've also now got a Lash Blast, is it Lash Blast Sport or Lash Blast Active? 
What's that all about? I feel like I'm maybe not 100% satisfied with the way everything is blended on the eyes. I'm gonna take a small brush like E47 style into this blue and just reinforce that on the lid. Because you know, with some blending and some aligning, it can get a little detensified. I actually mixed the like honey tan color and the plum. I'm just trying to help out my crease a bit. It's just such a hard like place to blend. Blue into something in the inner part of your crease. For lip colors, CoverGirl Outlast, I was playing with this Forever Fawn the other day, which is kind of like a long wearing nude lip, which is sort of hard to find when you think of it, because normally it seems like nude lip colors kind of wear down faster than anything. So if you like a good long wearing nude, I think that's an option. I still need to play around with natural blush a little bit, but my mom freaking swears by that stuff, and I would say that's on the good list as far as CoverGirl goes. Plus, it's one of those things that they've held on to for a long time. Now, meanwhile, they have redone their lipsticks and I have been sent all of them. I've been just trying them out, trying to figure out which formulas I like because some are labeled cream, some are labeled demi matte, and then I've got metallic as well. I would say all in all the cream formula is really nice but beware there are some things labeled cream that actually have a decent amount of frost in them. Like the cream label doesn't necessarily guarantee you 100% free from shimmer just straight up creamy lipstick. There might be an overall cream formula that still has some shimmer. So just sort of look closely at what you're getting. You've got your little like sample of what the color is going to be at the bottom of the tube. But all in all, I found some really pretty shades from that line. Um, there's a demi matte finish, which has a slightly less shiny um, tube. And I really think this is special as well. These are creamy and comfortable, not super shiny, but very full color. And then in everything, there was really only one metallic that I liked. And it was one that was on the deeper end because I didn't feel like it's frostiness made my lips look crazy dry, like it actually looked good. So I think what I might just insert here is a rapid fire, like photo montage of my favorite shades. <laughs> I think the shade that I want to go ahead and wear like all day with this look is my cream lipstick in Euphoria. And this is a really beautiful berry. I think it'll go along nicely with our berry theme. This cream formula is so comfortable, so rich feeling. It smells just lightly sweet, you know, nothing over the top. But it's a real true kind of pinky berry, you know, that we've got going on with this shade. Got like acres of chest showing here, so I need a little bronzer. Guys, I hope you had fun with this video. I definitely did. Um, CoverGirl, again, a brand with two sides. A lot of new coming in, a lot of OG favorites that they still hold on to, and I do love that about that brand. And I think it's impressive that they've taken the step to get that Leaping Bunny certification. I think it's kind of amazing that within this brand, there are two different foundations that I really can enjoy. One for the more matte end, one that makes me feel a little more hydrated and radiant. Also, huge fan of this stick concealer from the CG Smoothers line. That is a total hidden gem. The instant cheekbones just absolutely transformed my look. Eyeshadow wise, you know, they do have some good palettes. I mentioned the True Naked Sunsets, some of those different palettes that are packaged in that little, you know, rectangle shape. You cannot go wrong with Shimmering Sands. If you can hunt down some Queen collection, I don't think you'll be disappointed there. Really pleased with my new brow pencil that I used today, and I think the lipsticks are definitely worth checking into. Um, a really comfortable um, very luxurious feeling cream formula and their demi mats are really unique as well although if you're going for hardcore staying power pretty much nobody does it better than Outlast. So get you one of those duo products. They are really good. And they feel comfortable because you got that balm step over the top, you know? So thank you my friends. I really appreciate you spending your time here with me. I love you guys and I'll see you again soon. Bye.